almost all amateurs, so we're talking 99% of, of amateurs, have trouble moving properly about their hip joints during the golf swing. So to figure out how this works, there's some things we need to understand. First, we need to understand that hip rotation in the golf swing is not taking place as a consequence of hip muscle contraction. And you might say, well, that doesn't make any sense. I will show you why that is the case in a second. So this is a picture of uh, me in, my, in, in Appendix 1 in the Amateur Golfer's Dilemma. So showing you my setup, backswing. In the backswing, the right hip joint, there's internal rotation. I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Left hip joint in the backswing, external hip rotation. During the downswing, impact and follow through, there is external rotation taking place about the right hip joint and then internal rotation taking place about the left hip joint. So here's what it looks like. I'm going to, I'm going to take this picture and this picture and just show you what it looks like. So this is the pelvis. When the pelvis moves in the direction as you can see with this arrow as in the backswing, that pelvic movement about the rear hip joint is called internal hip rotation. When you get from the top of the backswing, downswing, through impact, follow through, what's taking place in the left hip joint is the opposite of what's taking place in the right hip joint. So now in the downswing and follow through and impact, the left hip joint is undergoing internal rotation as the pelvis moves about the left hip joint. Now we know for a fact that, these, that this movement of the hip joint has nothing to do with muscles that you find within the hip itself. So now again, that may sound crazy, but it's simply the case. So this movement that we are looking at here on the backswing is right internal hip rotation of the rear foot and then left internal hip rotation of the lead foot during the downswing. This is an article from a physical therapy, orthopedic sports physical therapy book about the kinesiology, so the movement of the hip joint, and here is a table, you can see internal hip rotators. Which muscles function primarily as internal hip rotators? Remember, top of the backswing, your rear hip is in internal rotation, and then through impact, downswing through impact, follow through, the left hip joint's going through internal hip rotation. Which muscles are doing it? None. <laughs> No muscles do it. Actually, our long thigh muscles do it and our abdominal muscles do it, but that's a tale for another day. Now, if you've never heard about this, about this before, it's just not, well, you have to think about it. Golf pros typically don't know much about anatomy and physiology or kinesiology, so, and they're not trained properly when it comes to this. But this has been known for a long time. So you can see my name here, Seaman, Seaman and Bobullion. This was, 49 was back in 1998. What do we do? We argue there are no muscles purely known for their function as internal, medial internal hip rotators, and then small little weak muscles for lateral hip rotation. So when you look at this, now where did this come from? This came from a paper that was published in 2015 about back pain. So these guys cited our papers from the, the uh, late 90s and then in 2000. So this is what it looks like at, during the downswing as a pro or an elite amateur gets ready to smack the ball. So the way that, now you can see up top here, figure 11 lateral media arch drill temporaries because I hadn't created my own images yet. So I, so I went online and I just grabbed a few and just snapped a few just to remind me of what I wanted to create, which I, and I created my own pictures for this. But what you should appreciate in this picture is how, first of all, dynamic this looks. You can see the pelvis is rotating toward the target. So we're internal hip rotation on the left hip joint. Notice where the shoulders are and head are pointing, though, opposite directions. So this is really like a dance. And a, the downswing in the golf swing should be viewed as a very relaxed dance with controlled aggression might be the best way, way to do it. But it has to be fluid and graceful. So think dance. Who looked like this when he danced from back in the 50s and 60s? Of course, it was Elvis. If you look at this... Look at Elvis's shoulders. They're pointing same direction, not a little more close on the golfer, but you can see pointing to the right, pelvis pointing to the left, pelvis pointing to the left. 
you can see if he if Elvis had his foot out here, he would look literally like he is getting ready to strike a golf ball. And so that's how you want to think about the downswing in golf. Well, the whole movement, a dance. And the best way to watch someone actually do it in the dance mode would actually be one of the greatest dancers of all time, and that would be Fred Astaire. All you have to do is just Google Fred Astaire golf dance, and then this will appear. You should watch this as a short video. It's amazing watching Fred Astaire dance through the ball. Now, one of the things that all the great pros do when it comes to moving through the ball, as I've discussed in previous videos, which you should watch, by the way, is that through impact, there is a, they're on their heels and they are squatting, a semi-squat. Here's Hogan. You can see Hogan is pretty close to smacking the ball, a split second away. He's going to crack that ball. Look where his, his rear heel is. Look where his lead heel is. Flat on the ground. Knees are bent, squatting. Now, it's not a squat squat, it's a, gentle, it's a baby squat, a little a chair type, type squat. Who else talks about squatting through impact? Well, Mo Norman said, I'm squatting through impact. And here's the greatest ball striker, the two greatest ball strikers ever, Hogan and Norman squatting through impact. And then perhaps the greatest player of all time in terms of wins, Nicholas squatting through impact. And again, flat on the lead heel. This is his Nicholas's one iron on the par five at Baltus Roll in 1967. He went one iron, eight iron, one iron, and then birdied it to break, I think it was Hogan's record for, for the U.S. Open. I think he shot us 274, 275. Anyway, so we need to appreciate that the great players are able to get into their hips and stay on their heels. Here is a pro who is on her heel but way out of her hips, standing up, doing Quasimodo, as I call it. And here is a Poor amateur on his four feet of his front foot and rear foot, standing up, chicken winging it, just kiting the ball to the right. Probably doesn't even hit it more than you know, 200 yards, if that, with this with this swing movement. So, what should we do to learn how to get into our hips properly, to use our legs properly? Because our legs, our leg muscles, our leg movements, they determine how our hips move. So, for us amateurs, uh, we need to actually swing from an exaggerated version of the squatting move. And I call it the squatting driver drill. So here's the rear view. You can see deeply squatted, staying deeply squatted at the top of the backswing, deeply squatted at impact, deeply squatted through follow through compared to Quasimodo and amateur stand up. Now you can't hit the ball that far when you're in this squatting driver drill, particularly if you stand really far, far back. If I the probably the farthest I hit it probably like this would be about 200 yards on a fly when I'm doing when I'm doing uh, this drill. I would have to move a little bit closer though because it's kind of hard to stay this deeply squatted and then and then still smack it well. But the point of this drill, before you actually try to hit it far, is to hit it while you maintain the squat position. That is how you teach yourself. You cannot learn if a pro cannot squat, and of course amateurs cannot squat. And they do it from their regular swing, it's because their brain doesn't know what this position is like. So we've got to train our brain. It's called motor learning. We want to create a motor pattern, a brain-created motor movement pattern to keep us squatted through impact. So this is the rear view. This is the front view. Same squatting driver drill. Now notice, setup. Notice how my legs are working, moving my pelvis. Top of back swing, and you can see legs are moving. Pelvis is moving. To get close to impact and then add impact, you can see that I, I maintain the squat position at impact and through. That is what you want for it to look like. Now, uh, this is not the only drill I created. Now, I'm actually squatting a little bit less here, I'm moving my hips a little bit better. This, this depth of squat, I can probably hit it about 200 yards on a fly. Same thing for the lateral lunge driver drill. Now, the reason why I'm doing lateral lunge here is because I want to make sure that through impact, I am deeply into my left hip. I am less deeply into my left hip with doing the regular squatting driver drill, much more deeply into the left hip if I do the lateral lunge driver drill because I'm already positioning myself into that position. Now, by the way, you don't have to go all the way through a follow through. I mean, this looks like kind of like stressful and it's quasi is. But I just put the follow-through picture here to show you how absolutely this looks. All you have to do is drop down and you're in a lunge. So I call this a lateral lunge driver drill. Let's look at the leg action. Top of backswing, watch the legs. 
You can see the leg action. It's not massive or impressive, but I'm into the left hip. Into the left hip on the left heel, and I stay there through impact. So let's look at what a pro looks like through impact. So this is Ryan Palmer. I'm going to back him up a little bit. This is Ryan Palmer. You can see that he looks like the lateral lunge driver drill. Now, if he was to move his foot back, how far back can I go? Well, further back this way, you could see that he would look like this. I cannot get into this position uh, unless I do the lateral lunge driver drill. So I've got to keep doing this and doing this, and eventually I'll get it to, to move into my uh, actual swing. So here is Ryan Palmer again. This is my actual swing. You can see how less dynamic it looks. <laughs> it's so much less dynamic so much less into my left hip, but I'm into the left hip and I'm on the left heel. And the reason why is because I'm working with the lateral lunge driver drill and the squatting driver drill. If you work on those, your brain will learn to use the legs better to create better hip motion. You want to create a motor program for that. So you got to do the drill over and over and over again. So this is a list of all the chapters and appendixes, appendices in the Amateur Golfer's Dilemma. Motor learning, an important thing to understand. And I describe it in, in, in common language, not scientific language. And then this is a 35-page appendix about swinging from the heels. So the, this is the table of contents. You can go right to Amazon and type in the Amateur Golfer's Dilemma. You can look through it again there. And you can see the Kindle and the paperback prices, very reasonable. To learn how to do these drills and to practice them, it can change your golf movement pattern in a shockingly quick period of time as long as you're patient with it. If you're not patient, it's not going to happen. But if you want to learn to move through the ball more like a pro, now I'm not moving through the ball like a pro, but I am moving through the ball less like a standing up hacker amateur or, or, or doing the Quasimodo move, which also takes us out of our hip. So we want to get into our hip and the way to do it is to stay on our heels, and you can do it by working with, as I said again, or said previously and again now, the lateral lunge driver drill and the squatting driver drill.